Here on Digital Futures, we look to demystify what may appear to be complex digital advances for an everyday consumer, but that are actually quite simple when you break it down. This episode is part of a series of mini specials on the future of the digital economy. Ambitious, I know, there's a lot of ground to cover. But we're taking up that challenge and inviting major industry influencers to banter with us. We'll be covering a bunch of topics, including consumer confidence in digital services, data transparency, a pretty important one, from companies and startups, and how to make this sector's explosive growth feel relevant to all citizens. We'll also touch upon what it's going to take to bring more young women into STEM careers. Today, I'm having what promises to be a very sparky dialogue with a highly influential woman and charismatic speaker, Jennifer Arcuri. She's the creator of the InnoTech Network and now the founder of the cybersecurity venture that I let her tell you about. Jen, thanks for being on Digital Futures. Thank you for having me. So look, kudos on all the fantastic work you've done with the InnoTech Network. I've been following it very, very closely. And it's become such a vibrant forum to get policy makers together with digital leaders to debate very, very critical issues. Jen, let's kickstart this conversation by talking about digital infrastructure and the playing field for entrepreneurs in the UK and US. Okay. There is an upcoming report called the Digital Life Index that will reveal the US and the UK to be the number one and number two spots, respectively, as ranked amongst 34 countries for many criteria to do with the digital ecosystems. Now, as an American who moved to the UK, <laughs> what contrasts do you see firsthand between the two regions in terms of the digital economy? Yeah, I mean, this is a hard subject because I am very much a big advocate for the scale-up report with Sherry Kutu and want to focus on scaling our startups here. but. London is the best place by, by far to start your company, but really to go global, it's still the valley. And we haven't really popped as many large scale global businesses in the tech sector here. Given, I mean, we've only been going for really about four, five years now. Um, and I feel very uh, close to London's tech scene because I feel like I've seen it, you know, grow up around me. Whereas, you know, the valley has been going around for 65 years. Let's talk about talent and skills, right? Sure. Given that demand for digital pros and experts is surging by the minute across Europe and the US, what skills will folks that aren't already immersed in the tech sector realistically need to compete in this digital economy? I know that's really mm, putting you on the yes. spot. Uh, well, I think like one of the most controversial skill sets that I'm constantly pushing for are cybersecurity. For example, we've got 300,000 jobs needed in this sector, but the, the catch-22 there is like, do you really want to teach a bunch of kids how to lockpick? You know, and I get a, I still get questions, why, why do you teach kids how to hack? Well, the reality is, is more connected devices, more people will need to understand about patching and updating your system and protecting yourself online. So we definitely need skills uh, around security. Also AI and data systems, like understanding how artificial intelligence will dramatically change our business, our world. So any kid that I talk to that's just graduating uni but not sure what they do, I'm like, go back to school, get tech skills. I mean, I taught myself how to hack you know, and I have five certs under my belt, so anybody can do it. Well, well done you. Yeah. I wouldn't want to put my devices in front of you any not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I'm not going to hound you with yet another question about women in tech, because I know we both get that quite a lot, <laughs> but we do need to rally more girls. You're going to love it. <laughs> to, <laughs> to consider STEM careers. Yeah. But I think what I'd like to ask is, A, is it more helpful or is it more irksome to constantly hear the not enough women in tech sort of mantra? And also, what can we sustainably do, both as women in tech as well as the wider industry, to sustainably move the needle on getting more young women into STEM careers? Okay. I, I love this question because I actually won't respond like most people respond. I actually wrote an article, The Rise of the Wobots, that are, it was spoke about how let men run into, rush into an industry. It is the women that come in afterwards, we pick up the pieces and we drive change or we execute based on what's not been done. Last spring, I was asked to launch a meme for women in tech so on this very same question. And so I asked everyone from all over the valley to up and down the East Coast to London and up in, you know, up north, uh, Manchester and Newcastle. And all my girls kind of felt, we all had different opinions on what we should do. 
Fair enough, but the one thing we all could decide was let's just start a database. Let's just vote, you know, optimize our voices. You as amazing, you know, tech expert that you are, you know, speaking about, you know, whatever you are your expert in. And this has taken off dramatically. And that's where the Pink Sheet database comes into place. So you must come to the next one. Yeah, you're flying the flag really high for getting more girls into tech. But I think you're absolutely right. It's it's holding up the shiny examples. Yes. Of those women that are in the industry and flourishing, rather than constantly going, where are the women? And I think they will come. <laughs> yes, they will. So Jen, those of us working in tech embrace modern advances. We understand the internet of things, we understand smart cars and smart homes, but a lot of folks I speak to do still feel a little bit daunted by the world of big data, biometrics, and connected cars. And they, they often say it can feel quite intense. How do you think we can take non-digital natives along for the ride? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a question. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I get that a lot too. And I, it's, it's easy to talk around with big words and throw these concepts out. Not everybody gets it, and that's okay. I think though, the, the argument when people start kind of really showing the fears with this whole digital connected age is to recognize that this is where we're moving as a whole. So it is our job as advocates of this sector to kind of, you know, teach the new people to get involved, you know, and not everybody's gonna be into tech, but we do live in a digital age. So whether you uh, wanna get into security or not, you should, you should still understand a few things about your iPad or your iPhone that will inevitably protect your identity online. This is the education bit that is now part of building a good business, being good advocates of our scene. A big reason why I run my events and produce these dinners is so that we can all be words of mouth, you know, little uh, tech minions, if you will. Oh, I love that, tech yeah. minions. So on that note, there's two tech minions. <laughs> yes. I'm going to sign off. Thank okay. you so much for doing Digital Futures with us today. Thank you very it's much. It's been a really sparky dialogue, like I said in the beginning, and I always deliver on my promises. Yes. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. And thank you for watching.